Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube. And today is Sunday, January 7th. So we are a week into the new year. Things have been going good. So movies and TV this week, I watched the movie May, December on Netflix that stars Juliet Moore, Julianne Moore. Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman. And it's about Julianne Moore's character wound up having an affair and then marrying a 13 year old boy when she was 36. And it's almost like the Mary, uh, Mary Letourneau, like that whole thing. And Natalie Portman is an actress in a movie about her story. So she comes to stay with them for a couple of days to try to get an insight on the character. It's quite an odd little movie. So I watched that. And then on Tubi, when I was like cutting up vegetables for dinner, I watched Girls Just Want to Have Fun with Sarah Jessica Parker, Helen Hunt, when they're really young. Like it's one of their first movies. I love that movie so much. That is a feel good movie. So it was nice to watch that. And then on Netflix, I've started to watch a series called Quicksand. And it's about this, and it's dubbed, but it's dubbed well. It's about this girl that is involved in a school shooting at her high school. And she's the one that's being prosecuted for the murders of all the students. But you're like, did she really do it? I'm only a couple episodes in, and so it goes, it, it shows you, you know, current, the school shooting, but then it goes back. It goes back and shows you leading up to what happened. Um, powerful stuff, though. I mean, yeah. So that is what I have watched this week. Like I said, I will list everything down below that I watch and where I watch it. We also watched last night, we caught up on Hell's Kitchen. And then if you guys watch The Golden Bachelor on Hulu, the people got married and they did, it's called The Golden Wedding. So they, we watched that and it was actually very nice. So that was on Hulu as well. Um, books. I abandoned a book I started to read. I started to read Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed and some of this stuff was good. It's like an advice column, but I just lost interest. So I'm not reading that anymore. I'm still reading uh, Louis Giglio's Don't Let the Enemy Have a Seat at Your Table. Not all the way through that yet. And then I've been taking a break somewhat from reading because I read, I mean, 75 books in 2023. I set my Goodreads reading challenge at 100 books this year. I just want to see how close I can get to that because I don't expect to read 100 books. But what I have been reading, and this is my... Um, one, two, three, four, five. This is my seventh day, I think, on it. Yes. Um, Bill and I started a different eating plan. He's doing Weight Watchers. But I'm doing intermittent fasting and low carb. So I have been reading Jen Stevens' 28-Day Fast Start. This is what I followed. So she gives you a chapter in the book for each of the 28 days. You don't weigh yourself until the 29th day because the point is to get this under, you know, under your belt before you even worry about weight loss. And I've done really well on it. I haven't cheated. I haven't gone off. I haven't done none of that. And I have right now, so the plan that I chose in here, she gives you three different ones. The one that I chose was the first week you have an eight hour window where you can eat food. Starting tomorrow, then it goes to seven hours, then it goes to six, then it goes to five, and you stay at five. So right now, my eating window is 11 to seven. Starting tomorrow, it's going to be 12 to seven. Then next week, it'll be one to seven, and then the final week will be two to seven, and then I'm going to stay at that. So I feel better. I feel a ton better already just in my body. Like I don't feel bloated or gross. And I mean, I'm not eating any junk. So, and I never thought I could be somebody who would uh, be able to drink black coffee. And, you know, cause in your fasted portion of the day, 
You're only supposed to have black coffee or water or like unsweetened tea if you want that. So I, the two weeks before I started it, I started to kind of wean myself off of the coffee creamer. I started only using half and half or heavy whipping cream, first of all. And I started to just wean my little bit, little bit, little bit. And I have no problem with black coffee. Now, I normally drink Dark Magic, um, dark roast coffee from, I think it's Green Mountain. I did some research the other day and somebody said, you know, get a lighter roast coffee for the coffee you have to drink black. And so I bought Starbucks Veranda, which is a blonde blend. And it's a light roast and it is much easier to drink that black. Because when I open my um, eating window, I usually have a cup of coffee with heavy whipping cream, like a regular cup of coffee. I didn't really put sugar in my coffee anyway. I mean, I used a tiny bit of Starbucks creamer or I used half and half. So I wasn't like, that wasn't a hard transition because I still got to have my coffee in the morning. But yeah, it's, it's going well. Um, like I said, I feel better. I don't feel so bloated and gross. And I figure over the month, I'll, with, even without stepping on the scale, I'll be able to feel it in my clothes. So, but yeah, got to do it. Got to stop playing around and, you know, get healthy. And I don't want, and okay, here's another little side effect. So when I do, for me, low carb works. And the reason why I like doing low carb is because um, it rids my body of inflammation. So usually when I go get a massage, it hurts. I mean, because I have inflammation in my body. So I went to my massage yesterday. Not one point that she did hurt. And I knew, so I know it's working. Yeah, that was a, that was a game changer right there. Um, I am drinking. So I only have water or black coffee in the fastest day, but when my window opens... I will also have water, but I also have Power Eight Zero, and the one that I'm drinking, it tastes like a great Jolly Rancher. It's really good. Okay, so that's what I've been reading. Read a chapter of that book every day, at least for this month, I will be. And I'll get back on track with my domestic suspense books. I have just been taking a break from doing that because what have I been doing in the evening instead of reading? Obsessed completely obsessed. So if you don't know what this is, these are logic puzzles. They're actually murders. And it reminds me of, it's a combination of Sudoku, because let me show you one of the grids. Here's a grid. They give you clues, you cross off things. And when you can put a check mark, you know, the other two are X's because there only can be one answer. Do you know what I mean? And they have an easy section, which are the first 25 puzzles. Then the next 25, I think, are medium. Then the next are really hard ones. So I got through the easy. I did all 25 sitting down watching football last Sunday. The second section, it takes me longer now because you have to, they give you different clues to try to deduce. So what I've started to do is for the harder ones, I will mark in pen on the grid what I know exactly is correct. Then when I'm going through the other clues, I will have a pencil. So I can erase if I'm wrong. And that has worked out famously. So I bought that. Well, Bill got me that for Christmas as part of my Christmas present. But I also got volume two because hell yeah. And volume three is coming out in April. And someone was like, how'd you get it spiral bound? Amazon, this came like this. This was an option. Now, if you pre-order the volume three on Amazon, it's only in paperback. I'm going to wait for the spiral, but obsessed. It's, it keeps your brain sharp. It, it's nice because the key is in the back so you can look and see if you're right or wrong. And they give you instructions in the front. So how to do it because I had no clue. And it took a couple puzzles. Like I messed up like two of them, but it took a couple. And then once you get it, you get it. You can apply the same formula just with different clues and things. And yeah, it's like the game Clue. You know, it's Professor Plum in the conservatory with the lead pipe. Like that's what you're trying to answer as far as the puzzle. So enjoying that very, very much. 
Okay, purchases. So I still belong to one fabric of the month club. I belong to Fiberlicious and I get 32 count Lugana. And I wanna say this was December's um, Winter Musings. So a very nice olive green. I really do like Lugana. That has to be my favorite um, even weave. So got that. And then, so you know I've been using the micro dots for diamond painting. This is the one I, the box I have. There's 200, 325, one eighth of an inch. One of you said, have you seen Wilson's 3D Designs glue dots holder? No, I have not. So I went to their site and I ordered it and it came in and it's magnificent. So it is $15 with shipping. It was $22. Here it is. I got the teal one because it matches my trash can cover minder. So you can see on the bottom, it's a cover minder. So I just clip this to the edge of my diamond painting. There's a slit out of here where you can pull out to get a glue dot. And the top opens so you can put your roll in there. Is that not magnificent? And so the lid is held on magnetically as well. This is brilliant, truly brilliant. And to be able to have them right at your fingertips next to your canvas versus um, having to, I would have to get up and go in my little cabinet and get it. So I will link this down below. Love, love, love that. That was fantastic. Okay, I also have some pattern purchases. So I purchased, because I really want to do like a Valentine's themed bread bowl, bread basket, bread basket. You know, the dough bowl, the dough bowl. That's what I'm thinking of. I don't know if I'm going to get to it though before Valentine's Day, but um, Primer's Cottage came out with one of their little houses, Be Mine Home. So I finally bought it. Very cute, very small. That would take no time at all, I think, to stitch. And then I actually used, uh, my friend Becky had bought me a gift certificate to Autumn Lane Stitchery for Christmas. So I finally used part of it and bought this pattern. Love this one so much. And I think I would actually finish it in a hoop because, man, that would be a really easy finish. And I've never done that. So I may do that. I really love this one so much. And, okay, so you know that I got for Christmas from my dad and stepmom the halo glow light so i'm going to show you the light because i pulled it out of the box finally but i bought something to carry it so here is the light folds down perfectly flat this has this is like felty so it's grippy and then you just and what's so nice so this is also a magnifier which i don't need that yet but look how bright it is. It's bright. It's hella bright. And there's two settings on it. And what's nice is it will tell you when, when you have it on. I think it lets you know when it's getting ready to die. You can see the dots going down. It's rechargeable. But what's nice is you can have it on the table and have it bent way down. And it doesn't fall over. That was a game changer for me. Not to mention when I go to the Stitch NJ Retreat in July, you can't plug anything in. So this is what you need if you need a light. And when I work on fabric, I need a light. So someone suggested to get a hard keyboard case to carry this in because I wouldn't want to just throw this in my bag. So I did. And I want to show you what it looks like in the keyboard case. So this is the one I got. Isn't it pretty? Handles, zippers, and when you open it, well, I have the cord in this side, the cord to, to recharge it, but here is the lamp. And it holds, I mean, it, it'll move around in here, but these are Velcro, and it holds it so it doesn't get messed up in your bag. So I will link this case down below. I want to say the case was $15. Something, I don't know. I'll link it, but I really liked this one. So I got that. And then, so 
if you watch my channel for any length of time, I have done a lot of diamond painting unboxings in them. And I've done them different ways. For the most part, 90% of my unboxings are like me here. I hold up the canvas. I show the diamonds. Then I decided I wanted to try to do it overhead. So I had the canvas laid out. I was sitting on a stool trying to show where the specialty diamonds were. And last week I was like, I have to figure out a different way of doing it because I'm not happy with that way. It's uncomfortable me sitting in the, on that stool and having to reach and it's not good. So I was sitting there like, how can I do it? How can I do it? I had the idea, and I've not seen someone do this yet, of getting an artist easel that stands up on the floor, a piece of foam core, or, you know, yeah, foam board, clipping the canvas to it. So in the video, the canvas will be completely visible. I have my, let me show you, I have my, on my Ikea cart, and that's the angle that I'll film the video at is I will stand next to that cart and I bought it and it's coming today. You know, one of those pointers that teachers use in a classroom that it's like a stick and you point to the chalkboard. And I'm going to do this because I have a diamond painting here that I just got in the mail yesterday. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to look at the kit beforehand. So it's going to be completely different than I usually do it. I'm going to figure out where the specialty diamonds are. I'm going to cut those out of the pack so I can show you guys. And then I'm going to be standing back where the tripod is and pointing to the areas on the canvas that show where the ABs are, where the blah, blah, blah. I took a picture and sent it to uh, my friend Becky because I was like, oh my God, I decided Friday night because... I had toyed with the idea and I looked on Amazon for a tripod and I mean the artist easel and the foam core and I wasn't really finding anything and I said you know what there's a Michaels and an office depot right next to each other about 10 minutes from my house Michaels had the artist easel office depot had the foam core so Friday evening Bill wound up playing poker with some of his friends and I was done work by like five o'clock and I had to go out and run an errand. And I'm like, you know what? While I'm out, let me go to Michael's. Let me go to Office Depot. I had, um, oh no, I used the rewards thing on the, forget it. I did have a coupon though for 40% off of something. See that sign back there? I bought that at Michael's. I will get you closer to that because I absolutely love the sentiment on it. But here is the um, artist loft easel that I got. And this was $25, well worth every penny. It literally is all one piece. It's like poles together. And when you pull it out of the box, it literally just, it reminds me of a cane that a blind person uses where it just unfolds. This thing just unfolded all in one piece and I just set it up and there's two clips. And the piece of foam core I got at Office Depot was a 20 by 30 and that was like $6. And I have two clips. It worked fantastic. I'm like, I really think this is gonna work. You guys will be able to see the canvas, the whole canvas and the entire video. I'm just hoping that the it's close enough where when I do the pointer to show you where the specialty diamonds are, that you'll be able to discern it. We'll know after the first video. So I'm hoping this week to do a video because here's the diamond painting kit that I have. I bought this. Not Saturday. I didn't buy anything from their most current release, but last week. This is Flower Fairy by Jamaica Murphy. I don't know if that's how you say her name. This is round and it's very, very pretty. So here is the, that's it. I really liked it. Really, really pretty. And I did get my mystery box in from Diamond Art Club. One of the kits I did the unboxing of, the Autumn one by Hannah Lynn, I like that one. And I'm so glad I didn't buy that when it was released because that was the one kit in there that was, you got two kits that weren't released yet and you got one that was released. Another kit I got was Square and it was a very popular one. It's called Try to Follow. Everyone wanted it. I was able to trade it for a Hannah Lynn Christmas Mermaid that was released in those kits that I didn't get. So that's coming Tuesday. And then the third kit I actually sold to my friend Brandon, the 
the man that wound all my bobbins for the vintage chest, um, he bought that. So I liked the box. I liked the concept of it. And I was able to get two diamond paintings I really like and sell the other one and get back some of my money. So no problem there. So that's what happened with that. All right, whips and finishes. So let's talk about, I did do a tiny bit of diamond painting. So I will take you over there and show that when I show you the sign. You know what, we'll do that now. Okay, I always look in like the home section of Michael's and they had this sign, a beautiful thing is never perfect. And I absolutely loved it. And it how he has the hanger, I just put a 3M hook on the wall. There was nothing in this space here. So I was like, I need something there. Because when you back up, let me back up, and you look at the whole wall, it's, it's nice to have something there. So diamond painting, I just got a little bit more done here because remember I had done the black in my last paint with me. So I got done this section and this little bit. I didn't get done very much, but still something. Still love this one so much. Um, yeah, love, love, love. Let's talk about the sewing machine and making pillows because that was this week's task. Cause I only worked I was off a couple days. I only worked Wednesday and Friday. So I played with the sewing machine and I'm getting the hang of it. I really love, let me flip you around and I'll actually show you the sewing machine, how it's on my desk. This is how I have it. This is the machine. A brother XM2701, love it. I, as far as I had to watch the video to know how to thread it, but I even know how to do that now without watching the video. So I had three finishes that I wanted to make into a pillow to practice. The first two were the ornaments from Hands-On Design. And when I did them, I messed them up. Um, I tried to do pom-pom, like rickrack on, on the edge, and it didn't work out. And the other one, I had trouble with the corners. I just had a lot of trouble. And Bill was like, well, why don't you just take a seam ripper and, and tear it out and redo it? So before I did that, I wound up taking the Primrose Cottage Stitches one that I did and doing a pillow out of that. And I have to say for my first real attempt at a pillow, I didn't do bad. So here is the pillow. I even did rickrack around the outside. And then on the back, because I do it like the Primrose Cottage girls do it as far as I sew all the way around and then cut a hole in the backing fabric to be able to stuff it. And then I just glued, I did um, pinking shears and just glued a piece of felt on the back. Now, one thing that I got frustrated with was the Primrose Cottage Stitches ladies are very adept on the sewing machine. They know what they're doing. When they do rickrack, they just bend it and go, bend it and go. I was having so much trouble with that because the, I mean, these corners still are not perfect, but it is leaps and bounds above some of my first pillows that I tried. So Carrie from Tiger Lily Designs, she had a finishing video. She does four separate pieces of rickrack. She runs it here, cuts it, overlaps it, cuts it. And I did that and it worked. And I'm like, okay, that's what I'm going to be doing. Four separate pieces. Forget that trying to bend around the corner because I always mess it up. So I used the poly pellets to stuff most of it. And then I used fiber fill to really get it stuffed. But isn't it so, I can't, it's so very cute. I absolutely love how this turned out and Bill even really liked it. So enjoyed that. So then I was confident enough to do the other two. Remember, I tore them out. This one turned out not bad. And I used baby rickrack. I mean, look at that little. I thought I did so good on that. And then there's the back again with the little. But yeah, I thought it turned out really cute. This one, next one is my least favorite one because it's too far over on the one side. But I still didn't do a bad job with the rickrack. I'm still learning. But see how it's like this could have been scooted over. And so I did that incorrectly. But for my first couple pillows... I think I didn't do bad. And these will all go in the dough bowl 
I, I actually it's a longer burger basket that I have but these will all go in there until I um, get some more done because I don't have any other ones done and I just I like using the Rick Rack I'm, I'm getting more adept I really have practiced and practiced and practiced so um, that has been a lot of fun to do that stitching this week so I decided to abandon the third ornament that was in this set I just I wasn't feeling it so I decided to pull out and start I meant hold on that was Bill he's doing something with um, his friend from around the corner and he was telling me he's, he must he's going somewhere so I decided to pull out um, and start warm winter wishes by Primrose Cottage this was in their most recent sip and stitch box I'm going to finish it just like that um, with the white rickrack around and then a piece of fabric on the back. So they they use more muted colors in a lot of their patterns. And I decided I converted all the colors again. I did brighter reds and greens. So I will post the conversion down below. And I'm stitching it on 32 count light taupe Lugana. And I got done W-I-N-T. And this needle minder is from the Scarlet Sky Designs uh, holiday box that I got. So looking pretty good. I just have to sit down and do some more of it. <clears throat> because in the evening, I'll be honest, I've just been literally going downstairs and doing some of the Myrtle things, the Myrtle puzzles, and just going to bed. I haven't been stitching or diamond painting in the evening. Uh, but I think that's all I have to share with you. Yeah. But getting the hang of it on the pillows. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for the diamond painting unboxing. The pointer, like I said, is coming today. So, hopefully this week. I, I'm working. I'm on the calendar four days out of the five, so I don't know how much time. But if not this week, then definitely this coming weekend. I will try to fit in that unboxing video. So, as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.